Hi guys, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and today we're taking a look at a CRKT knife review, a brand that we don't review very often. Um, there's reasons for that. Anyways, this is the Bev Edge. Why has it got that name? Because it's uh, for beverages to open them with a bottle opener and it's got an edge. So beverage edge. You've got this model, the sheep's foot model in stonewash and there's a American Tanto or Western Tanto version uh, in all black, black wash. Those are the two ways of getting this knife. All steel frame lock construction and uh, flipper, fliffler, fliffer. It's got the fliffer on it. See the little fliffer stick there? Flipper. <laughs> you can open it via the flipper or you can open it via that hole uh, like, uh, whoops, like I like to do with my left hand, just makes it fly open. Um, I'm a little better with some of the opener. Bandit bargain, stop it. I'm a little better, you know, with the flipper sometimes with the left hand than the right. I'm just not that good opening with those holes with my right hand. It's just something I don't get. So there you go. I did grow up left-handed. Uh, so if you're interested in a knife tool system like this, stick around. The full review is coming very, very soon and no more barking from Bandit for the rest of the review. Let's keep watching. Let's get started with a size comparison. Here's the Ontario Rat 1. Yeah, it's a smaller knife than the Ontario Rat 1. Doesn't fit on the screen with it hardly at all. It's intended for totally different uses than something like the Ontario Rat. Uh, now, this isn't an awfully large knife. I will give you all of the dimensions and everything later. Uh, often my CRKT reviews attract views from people who don't normally come to the channel, so I'll tell you, my hands are between uh, large and extra large in North American glove sizes, between 9 and 10 in European men's glove sizes, so you might be able to figure out a little bit about how well it fits that way. If I put it in my hand this way, turn it over, and I'll show you it's completely lost in my hand. But it's not bad because you get pretty good grip. Uh, the two middle strong fingers, they fit in between here. So does the index. They all fit within that section. So that gives a good opportunity for extra grip. If you wanted to add a lanyard, you could do that too. But good grip this way. You know, even a reverse grip, my index finger still has a lot of metal right there to grab onto. And you have good control that way. You know, a reverse pull grip. Yeah, not so much. That's not what this knife is designed for, and it's not that comfortable doing it, in part because of the uh, bottle opener right here. The bottle opener, I'll say, yeah, it's a good bottle opener. It works well. It's designed well. Uh, you don't have to try multiple times to get a bottle open. At least I didn't. So functional. Uh, stainless steel uh, handle scale, stainless steel backspacer that makes the uh, bottle opener, and uh, screws here screw holes here for the pocket clip. So the pocket clip is deep carry pocket clip. On right or left side works just fine. We've got um, ball bearings in the uh, pivot system and a steel ball bearing detent that uh, works quite well. Let's see how well it shuts. And you can hear it. And that's a decent amount of, of hold that it's holding it with. If I shake it and suddenly stop, I'll try it off screen here, or I can do it really hard. Nope, there's no chance that I can get the knife blade to start coming out by, by only touching the handle and flicking really hard. The frame lock arm, you can see something, there's a little screw there. That's because they've built in an over travel stop. So you can't push this arm too far. So that's a reasonable protection that they built in. The blade now, it, you've got a very slight thumb riser and then there's your uh, ball bearings designation for their type of ball bearings that they like to use. And then it drops down and it keeps dropping down steeper right near the tip. And then the hollow ground, very typical sheep's foot kind of style. You've got a sharpness choil that is not big enough. So if you wanted a sharpness choil that didn't create this big extra part of ground steel where you, when you sharpen the knife, then the choil should have been forward more. 
Hopefully you can see right here that there's more steel going up the side than it is over here. Like it's just a little bit smaller there. As you look along the edge, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but the angle is changing tremendously. Whoever sharpened this knife needs retraining, seriously. And I'll give you more details of that later on. They do not know how to sharpen knives at all. He, he or she tried to make a point of trying to make as much steel show on the grind on both sides, but they did a very poor job of it, which means the cutting edge is waffling a little bit from side to side as it's going down the blade. You know, it looks like it's ground. Uh, if you just look at the side, you look at the amount of steel that's ground away and the amount of steel that's ground away there. It seems to look like it's the same, but no, that tip is way off center on one side. So the sharpening job on this was done very poorly in terms of keeping the angles right. And I'll tell you the angles later. And even how sharp they got it was subpar. But a nice hollow grind. Uh, Bev Edge is the name there. It's an ox design. Model number right there, 4630. Uh, the black Tento one, the t black wash one is 4635. And uh, yeah, you've got a hole to deploy it or a flipper. Now the hole, I can deploy it half decent, uh, partly because they did a decent job with the detent. So flip it out that way. And of course, it can flip with the flipper. That's quite good uh, because they did the detent fairly well. Lock up here, it's pretty good. It's what I like on a frame lock. On a frame lock knife, I like the frame lock arm to go at least a third of the way across the steel of the main bevel. So I showed you what the pocket clip looks like. Is it any good going in and out of a pocket? Well, let's take a look. Uh, let's try in this coin pocket. I've got big coin pockets because I'm a big guy. And uh, yeah, fits in there, no problem at all. Very little knife showing. And of course, they've got their brand sticking out, but it's not bad at all. It comes out very well. It wants to climb over and climbs in no problem at all. Just it's a well done pocket clip. And I really like the fact that it's on both sides. I'll show you the inside next, then we'll do the sizes, and then I'll talk about the pros and the cons, what I really think of this knife. So to take it apart, uh, the pivot screw's got a D-shaped pin in there. So one side will spin and the other side will not spin. So I would prefer if this side that doesn't spin, and I don't know, sometimes it might be assembled the other way around, but this side that doesn't spin, I would like to have just a smooth button on there so that you can't put a screwdriver in it and chew it all up. Wreck the screwdriver maybe, and make that look ugly and bad. No. It uh, is fairly loose from the factory. I haven't taken this apart before. You're seeing it the first time on screen. Uh, there's no, is there some Loctite on there? I don't see anything like that on there. And uh, here's my T6s. All right, put those guys over to the side. You can see the uh, Ball bearings right there, steel ball bearings in that sort of uh, bronze brass kind of case, metal case. That's a good thing. And uh, on this side, if I take this guy out, I don't know if you can see that the flat, there you go, you can see the flat side on that pin that stops it from spinning around. And I'm going to take everything apart, clean it up, and make it look good. There's oil residue on there already. There's the detent. There you can see that over travel stop really well. It stops the knife from being able to be knife uh, lock arm from being pushed too far. Simple, easy treatment. Now it looks like they've got some brass in here for the screws to screw into. That holds everything together. So simple knife, uh, stop pins right here. It just sits in place, but it goes all the way through. So you can see it on the other side. So it's got plenty of hold. That's a strong way to do a pop, uh, stop pin, no problem at all. So I'm going to clean it up, then put it back together, but I'm not going to show you all the cleaning up. So I'll be back in a second. All right, now it's time to talk about the dimension specs, all that kind of stuff. 8 sear, 13 MOV stainless steel. Yeah, it's an okay steel. It's a budget steel. It's at the bottom of my list of what's okay. 
Rockwell hardness usually around 58 on these guys. So for a budget knife, I don't mind seeing 8CR13 MOV. We've got a weight on this knife, 106 grams, 3.75 ounces. Now, did you see any skeletonizing when I had it apart? No, they could have milled out some of the steel, you know, like maybe half the depth in a few areas, you know, to help bring this thing down, maybe even close to five and three and a half ounces. Every little bit would be better. This knife is a little heavy for its size. Uh, the factory sharpness, 325 bess. Uh, like I've said multiple times, 200 on that score or less is considered sharp. So this was not very sharp from the factory. The cutting edge length, 6.15 centimeters, 2.42 inches. The blade length, so tip to the closest spot on the handle, that's 6.53 centimeters, 2.57 inches. The blade thickness, 2.82 millimeters, that's 0.111 inches. The uh, blade depth, this measurement here, 2.9 centimeters, 1.14 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, 0.57 millimeters, which is 22 and a half thousandths of an inch. So it's a little bit thicker than is optimal. Not terrible. Uh, the grind angles. Now let me see if I can remember, see it easily. I can easily see it. This side was sharpened to 12.7 degrees. That's sort of in the middle here. That's what the angle was. There's a different angle here, different angle here, different angle here for sure. So 12.7 degrees here. On this side, at the same spot right here, 29.1 degrees. And, you know, a little bit shallower, a little bit steeper. It just is wonky all the way along that edge. One side's way more shallow than the other. So to re-sharpen this to make it 20 degrees per side, yeah, it's going to take a bit of steel off, but it is really what's needed. Uh, I can do it easily with my system for sharpening, but uh, if you've got one of those systems where all you do is match what the factory did, do you really want to match this? 12.7 on one side and 29.1 on the other? No, you don't want to match it. You want to fix it. Uh, on to the handle. Handle length, 8.95 centimeters, 3.52 inches. The grip area in a, here, about seven centimeters, two and three quarter inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 8.94 millimeters, about nine millimeters basically, and 0 0.352 of an inch, so just over a third of an inch thick. The handle depth, it's biggest right about there, and that is 2.65 centimeters, 1.04 inches. The depth of the knife when it's closed, so taking up space in your pocket, I usually don't add the flipper. It's right about here, and that is 3.44 centimeters, 1.35 inches. The total length of the knife from the very end to the tip, 15.43 centimeters, 6.07 inches. So yeah, clearly it's a smaller knife, um, but it needs a smaller weight. It needs a uh, better knife sharpening, significantly better knife sharpening. Um, I'm into the stuff that I like and don't like. Actually, I should do the prices first, shouldn't I? How much does this knife cost? Well, I got mine through White Mountain Knives, um, and their price is $26.99. Of course, I got my reviewer's discount. Uh, you can get 10% off with code CCE, and then it's $24.29 US. So under $25 US dollars, how picky can I be? I can be picky if I want to be. Do I like this knife? Yeah. Do I love this knife? Not a chance. Uh, what are some of its shortcomings? What are some of its strengths? Well, here's a big full-size knife from made by Ganzo. This is also made in China for CRKT. Um, we've got 440C stainless steel here, which is a fair bit better than 8CR13. So that's a good thing. Uh, we've also got a frame lock. And check this out. One thing that I really find that bugs me a lot is look at that huge cutout space right there for that frame lock arm. And then look at that space. You can barely get a hair through there. Wire EDM technology, and this knife is not young. This knife has been around for six years, seven years, and very, very thin cutting. Wire EDM technology makes everything look really good. So like when this knife is closed, 
which side looks better. Yeah, it's, this is just a much cleaner, nicer look. And it's mostly because of that lock bar arm with that big space, that trench, the end mill that they had to put in there to cut through that stuff or whatever technology they use for cutting it. I don't know how they cut it. I've said that about CRKT before. Uh, they need to change whichever factory they get their stuff made in in China because they need to get it made where Ganzo gets their stuff made and the quality is going to go up. So that's one thing I don't like. That's design thing or manufacturing thing. Could they have made it better with the tools they had? I doubt it, but I just don't like it that way. Um, the sharpener's toil, this long bevel long, or this long plunge that they get, long slow plunge. It's just not the right design. You just really need to make a bigger sharpener's toil unless you want the heel of the blade looking ugly. Uh, you can't get the same thickness all the way along when you've got the plunge still happening there. And on this knife, you know, there is a plunge as well, one of those slower types of plunges, but the placement of the sharpener's toil is better. It's still a little bit bad here. It should have been a bit further over, but this is worse. That's all I'm going to use that other Ganzo in here for. Or by the way, if you want to get one, these are still available at, uh, I'll leave a link down below, less than 16 US dollars free shipping to the US. Unfortunately, GearBest is no longer shipped to Canada. So there you go. Um, pocket clip. They did everything right with the pocket clip. There's nothing I dislike about the pocket clip. Size, placement, it's all good. Very good design that way. Uh, one thing I do like that they did on this block bar arm is they cut the relief on the inside so it doesn't leave this ugly section back here. Uh, I like the cut relief there to get your thumb in there to release the lock arm. Lockup's good, no blade play side to side. The alignment was actually pretty shoddy, but I just took it apart now on video and now I've put it back together again and it's a little bit off to the show side but not as bad as it was. So uh, maybe it just needed a little bit of cleanup and stuff, but it's still a little ways off from being centered. Pocket clip. Good, I like it. The jimping on the flipper tab is very, very soft. When I wasn't paying attention, sometimes I would slide my fingers over it. You know, I almost have to pay attention to it to get a good grip on it to make sure that I'm going to flip it open properly. That's both the good grip on the handle as well as, you know, making sure I'm on that flipper tab. They smoothed it off a little bit more than I would have liked, but not a big deal. Stop pin is done very well. D-shaped pivot pin, very good. Uh, ball bearings, they can't ask for more at this price point. That's good. Good detent. Uh, it doesn't really just fall shutty, but, you know, it at this price range, it shuts nicely and holds the blade in. There's a lot of good things to say about this knife. This is not a complete reject, especially since I know how to sharpen knives. So the worst thing on this knife is the cutting edge. And that's something that if you've been a knife collector for a while, you should be able to remedy on your own. There's all kinds of sharpeners out there from cheap ones to, you know, spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And uh, some of the cheap ones do a very good job. So there you go. Stonewash, sheep's foot, or as you can see in this picture, the black wash Tanto. Uh, pick whichever one you like if you're looking for one of these and go and get yourself one. I'd recommend that you check out my links down below to help you in your shopping. Some of those links are referral links like the Amazon ones and um, the White Mountain one. You can save 10% with the coupon code CCE. So I like trying to give back to my viewers. You guys are awesome. I very much appreciate my Patreon supporters. You guys are super special. It really does make a difference that you support the channel. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this, too. Don't use that for a forward finger choil because the cutting edge is just... There you go. So, remember, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.